Hey, well, hi everyone. My name is Zhu Lejiang. Currently, I'm a PhD student from Aarhus University. In this video, I can talk about the paper Computing Better Approximate Nash, Pure Nash Equilibrium in Card Games When semi defined Program Is. Uh, this paper is co-authored with my supervisor, Ioannis Karagayanis from Aarhus University. And in this video, I will cover the definition of the card game and the equilibrium and what the challenges for computing the uh, equilibrium and what is our solution. To start, to start introducing the card games, I would like to first start with the mass card problem. Mass card problem is a very fundamental computational problems where you are giving a graph as a weighted or unweighted graph. And then you need to uh, find the partition that maximizes the uh the sum of the, the sum of the weight of the edges or the number of edges that uh connecting the let's say the left side or the right side. And given the mass card game, given the mass card problems, the card game is a very natural generalization of the mass card problems. Well, you are given n players where the n is the number of nodes, and each player controls one node. And in the mass card, actually, we have found the vector of player variables to decide uh, should the Node go to the left side or right side. And here the players are only allowed to decide his own node. And unlike the mass card problems, the graph can be either uh, weighted or unweighted. Here we only consider the weighted version, weighted graphs, because the unweighted version is relatively easy and we can solve that in polynomial time. We will show it later. And to talk about games, we've already introduced what is the strategy players can choose that he can, they can choose to put his own nodes to the left or right side. That's a, like the binary strategy. And what is the utilities? Here I've already shown the current utilities for every players in the left side like all the blue numbers is the utilities for each player. And it's actually the total weight of the incident edges of his own nodes that in the cut. For example, the for the node B and the player controls node B, we'll call it as player B. And he, he will only care about the edges A, B, B, C, and B, E. And here his utility is 12 because only A, B, and B, C is in the card. And maybe you notice that this state is not a good state for uh, card games because you can see some of the nodes can change his strategies and then increases his utilities. For example, the node C. Well, of course, size node is the unhappy node. And when the node is unhappy, he will try to do something to increase his utilities. And he can also do this. And in, in the card game, it's very simple that he just jumped to the other side. For example, here, C notice that he can increase his, his utilities from 2 to 7 by jump to the right side. And then he is happy, like at least temporarily. And then we found the next node who can do such improvement is node E. He will do so. But his change will influence the utilities of other players. Let's look at player B. His utilities actually has he's getting better utilities and he's already happy, so. He wants to do anything. But for the player D, before he made his own improvement, 
his utilities, the player D's utilities is seven. And now he found because of E goes to the same side as his himself. His utilities like decreases to two. So he want to do the improvement, like to make his utilities to five. And after all the changes, we will find this state is a good state, that every player is happy in this state. We will call start state as the equilibrium. And equilibrium is a very important uh, concept in game theory. And you can say that is a stable state for a game, and it can uh, make sure the, what is the outcome of this game. And our, inter our goal is to compute the equilibrium. And before I introduce how to compute the equilibrium and what is the challenge there, we, I want to make another observation. And maybe some of you already noticed that this state is also a very good state for the cut province, that is, all the edges that in the cut, the sum, the total weight of the edges that in the cut is very high. And actually, the total sum of, of the edges, I, I mean, that is the objective for the mass cut problem, is also a very important quantities for the cut games. We call it as the potential functions. And here, I will show you, it's not a coincidence that uh, equilibrium state is also a good solution for the mass cut problem. Let's call, let's recall what happens during the sequence of improvement. First, the player C increases utilities by five, and at the same time, the objective of the mass cut problem also increases by five. And then on the second step, the player B increases his utilities by two. And the objective of the mask problems also do so. And at the last step, the same thing happens. There is one player who made the changes. His utilities is get uh, improved. And the amount the increases amount of his utilities is also the amount that changed before and after his change happened in the objective of Maktat problem. Actually, that is the definition of the potential functions. If only one player changes between two states and then if there is functions that the difference of these functions between these two states is the same as the utilities the player add changes between these two states. We call this function as the potential function. It's a very important, important function and actually that defines a class of games called potential game. And the card game is one of the potential games. And for the potential game, the local optimal of the potential functions gives a uh, equilibrium of the potential game. Uh, because si since the, uh, the local optimal always exists, so we can say that is equivalent to the existence of the pure equilibrium of this game. And to compute the equilibrium, we can just do the local search, like what we did for the improvement. We found if there if there is any player who is unhappy, then if there is any, then we just let him to do the improvement, and that is the one step of improvement. With the sequence of such improvement, that the potential function will end up uh, with the local optimal. Then that that gives us the equilibrium. This procedure is equivalent to the local search for the potential functions. And actually, 
by the definition of the games, and if we say the number of the players is one of the uh is a parameter of the input. See, we can see the local search, one step of the local search can always done in polynomial time. But note, it's not the polynomial algorithm to find the equilibrium because there can be exponential number of improvement steps. The sequence of improvement can be pretty long. And actually, computing the uh, equilibrium is, equi is equivalent to the local version of optimization problems. For example, for the card games, compute equilibrium in the, in there is equivalent to the local mass card problems with the flip neighborhood. Here, the notation, the first part of the notation, the local mass part problems defines what kind of uh, optimization problems we are looking at. And we are looking at the local version of this op optimization problems. And the second part, the flip, defines what is the neighborhood here. And the flip means we can pick uh, let's imagine the solution is a vector of Boolean variables. We can pick one uh, entry of these vectors and then flip that. that. That's what the flip neighborhood means. And unfortunately, some of, some computer scientists already shown that do computing the local optimal is the PLS hard problems. For the general cast, uh, satisfied case games, who is the uh, uh, game generalization of the constraint satisfaction problems? Is PLS hard, and it's proven by the Johnson, Papa Dimitra, and Yanakakis at nineteen eighty seven. And specifically, the computing the equilibrium of the card games. Is also pure is hard. It's proved by the Schaff and Yanakakis at 1991. And for some other like uh, local local version of optimization problems, it's also proven to be pure is hard. So the corresponding game generalizations uh, to compute the uh, for the corresponding game generalization to compute the pure equilibrium there is also pure is hard. And pure is is a complexity class that describes uh that calculates the difficulty of uh local search and all the local openness problems that one step of local search can be done in polynomial time, but the there's no guarantee of the length of improvement. And the diagram on the right side shows uh what what is the population of the uh PS, PS class in the complexity rules? And you can say it's almost at the same level as PPAD, who is also uh, an important class of uh complexity that describes what is the uh what is the difficulty of computing the mixed Nash equilibrium. Okay, since computer the pure equilibrium, computer the exactly equilibrium is proven hard, what can we do? We want to approximate it. But uh, before that, we we first need to define what is the approximate equilibrium, because unlike the classic optimization problems. There's only one objective, so we can easily define uh, what is the uh, uh, good enough solutions for that problem that we can def by defining the distance between uh, the solutions generated by some algorithms to the optimal solutions. But here, note, uh, for the game, actually, we, we are trying to maximize a lot of uh, objectives at the same time. And here is the uh, utilities of the players. So we want to say like 
all the utilities is good enough, then the state is a good approximation for a stable state. And another way to do the interpretation to do the interpretation is that uh, if the players is not so ambitious, they don't want to be the optimal. If because let me change the strategy can uh, require some effort, and if some players don't want to do put that effort and they are uh, think the current state is good enough, that they don't want to be the optimal. He just want to be in some good enough state. Then that also gives us the uh, approximate equilibrium. And apparently, the equilibrium is uh, approximate equilibrium. And here, this is also a uh, approximate equilibrium. If we define, if we make the approximate ratio, approximate ratio as two, and the formal the formal definition of the approximate equilibrium says that if every utility cannot be improved by one plus rule multiplicatively, then that state is a uh, approximate equilibrium. Okay, what is the progress here? What we know about computing the approximate equilibrium? At 2010, the Bakat, Chakrabuti, and Ka and Hannah uh, gives the first polynomial time algorithm that computes the approximate pure equilibrium. Actually, the three plus epsilon approximate pure equilibrium in card games. And later, the Karagianis, Finelli, and Gravin gives a uh, polynomial time algorithms for computing better approximate pure equilibrium in some in some uh, constraint satisfied case, case games, but not includes the card games. Use their, algor use their algorithm. We can still we can also compute the three plus uh, epsilon approximate pure uh, equilibrium in card games, but not beta. And actually, this algorithm uses the uh, recipes for computing the approximate pure equilibrium in congest games that is also a potential games. And this recipe is proposed by Skaragianis, Finelli, and Gra Gravin, and uh, Skopalik in 2011. And actually, that's all what we know for computing the uh, pure equilibrium in card games, or let's say in the potential games. And actually, all algorithms also uses the algorithm schemes proposed by Kalgiani, uh, Finelli, and Gravin, and as Copernic at 2011. Here, yeah, there's one intuition of these algorithms. Let's see, as I mentioned, the unweighted version of mass the card games is easy because there's a guarantee that the improve is not negligible in every single step. And what we know is that for unweighted graph, the mask the optimal solution for the mass card is bounded by uh, n square. That means the potential function is also bounded by n square. And at every single step of improvement, we can increase this, the potential function by one. Then at, in at most n square steps, the algorithm, the local search algorithm will terminate. And then we'll, we'll end up with some uh, equilibrium. So here the intuition is that if the weight is close enough, then the algorithm stops in polynomial time. Then what we do here, that is, how about we classify all the nodes by their 
maximum mutantes, possible maximum mutantes, and put the node with close mutantes together in one block. And every time we do the local search, we only changes the node in a single block. For example, here, we would like to perform the local search, local search algorithms in the block one, and then that stops, then we will say, if we fix all the strategies in the other blocks, it will have the good state, it will, have, it will end in the equilibrium. And then we're trying to perform the local search algorithms in the block two, but here, we will have the issue. That is, once we make some changes in the block two, these changes might influence, might break the equilibrium we already get in the block one. Then we need to do something to fix that. We can do so because after the local search our block and any possible subgames in the blocks has a high potential, high enough potential. And that is, if some of the nodes in the block two breaks the equilibrium, it will not decrease uh, the potential functions a lot. That means this equilibrium is fixable and we can fix it to some approximate equilibrium by how high the potential is. For the look search, it gives that uh, the potential is at least uh, one over three of the optimal potential. So that gives us the three approximation equilibrium. Then the intuition here is that if we can find the algorithms that uh, maybe some other algorithms is not uh, local search, but we can focus on one block and make sure uh, and compute the state that all the subgames in this block has high enough potential. That means greater than one over three of the optimal potential. Then we will be better. That's our contribution. What we did is that we replaced the local search by a routine using the semi-defined programming, and then perform the randomized rounding to get the improvement. And then we can try to approximate the mass cut, the potential functions in all the possible subgames in one block simultaneously. And how high the potential is, is at most, or it is at least one over, is at least one over 2.738. And then we get the 2.738 approximate period decrease in polynomial time. Okay, and that th that's what we did. And if you want to know, please read the paper. And but I will discuss what can we do more. For example, we use this, the algorithm scheme and we replace it by some routine. Can we do something better, like to approximate the potential functions in the uh, subgames simultaneously? And there's one component we did is somehow randomly. Uh, we use some randomized rounding and in the rounding techniques, we found something works, but there's no proof that that is the optimal rounding techniques. Can we find some better round techniques and use the same same definite programming and uh, with this better rounding techniques to get the better approximate periodic rate in card games? And can we jump out from this algorithm recipes, use some new schemes to compute the better uh, approximate equilibrium in card games. And one thing is unknown for the card games is that, is there any hardness for computing the approximate pure uh, equilibrium in card games? And then let's say if there's some PRS hardness because the uh, PRS is very like friendly for such problem. And also, all techniques can be used in some other constraint satisfaction games. For example, the two sets games 
that if we make the game generation of the two such problems. That's all the like possible directions of this problems can uh, diverse of investigation investigation. And thank you very much. That's all the content of this talk.